Welcome to 2024 WangieCon. And I thank you very much for coming on a Thursday. I know that's an imposition for many, and I really appreciate the, your showing up. For the last week, I just haven't slept very good because I keep thinking about all of the stories I wanted to tell you this year about how I studied on Okinawa, how Tommy Osi taught me, all the things that I've learned over these 60 some years, and how I would squeeze that all into half an hour, 40 minutes uh, seminar. And I've decided that, first off, you know it's my 87th birthday today, and I keep getting hugs and wishes and all. I want to get this all over with, so everyone say, Happy Birthday, George. Happy Birthday, George. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now forget about it. I don't want to talk about it because I'm still thinking like a 30-year-old youngster, and I want to stay that way. And as soon as I say that nasty 87, ah, I get all, all you know. Just don't want to hear it. So that's enough about birthday. I even got convinced Alan not to bring a birthday cake this year as he did last year. That was really extending that, that, that period of time. So I just want to think and act like the 30 year old that I really am with today's seminar. And I want to start by telling you how Ryuko Tamiyose taught me. The first problem that he had with me, he said, George, you're only going to be here about a year and a half, and you're going to miss a couple of days. But if you really focus, I'm going to have to modify the way I would like to teach you. And I said, well, first tell me, how would you like to teach me? And he said, well, I would like to take one year to teach you San Shin. And I said, oh, come on. Year, I can learn that probably in a week at most. And he said, yeah, you can learn the movements, but it, was, it would take you a year to find out what there is about San Shin that makes it so important. And so you would never forget the importance of San Shin, not so much the movements. And so he said, I'm going to condense the learning process into small segments of San Shen that will take, you know, whatever short period of time it's going to take you to simply learn the movements. So I think I did it in a week. You know, I learned how to move the arms and steps and turns and all that. And he says, okay. And I said, well, when am I going to learn the next part? And he says, George, you missed the point. You're missing the whole point of this. He said, now I want you to remember each segment that we went through, and when you go home, continue to practice Sanchin by trying to understand what these movements represent. So I said, okay, and then I quickly forgot about it. But as we went on, I learned all of the movements. It has taken me 60 years to really learn what they meant. And this all happened in small segments of my life. And every year I would feel something else about Sanchen that was important and how it linked to the more advanced Katha. And so a little of that I'm going to try to transmit to you today. And I'm going to do that by demonstrating Sanchen as I do it from 60 years of experimenting reverse engineering and just trying to figure out what these few movements really represent. And then I want you to all think about what are you looking at that Tommy Osi was trying to get me to look at the first time he saw San Shen, the first time I saw it. Okay, and what is important about these movements that make it such a valuable asset of Wei Chi Ru? All right, so if you bear with me, and I didn't get a chance to warm up, but you, you won't mind. San Shin Kata. And.
That is a sanction that Tamiyoshi taught me. And you notice, I could have gone faster, but if you've ever watched films of Moichi Sensei or Tamiyoshi Nakahono, you'll never see them go through a fast kata. Why? Because your kata are designed so that as you're moving, if you move really fast like that, you sort of miss out on what the kata is trying to teach you. But if you move like this, you notice there's acceleration. And that's what you're trying to learn. All right? You don't worry about your stance, but if you think about it, God has given us arches. And if you train barefooted, you learn to grip the floor by simply lifting your arches. And in lifting those arches, your toes will squeeze. And in San Shin, this gives you balance. So that you can move, you can transmit energy from the floor to your body into whatever you're hitting. All right, because your foot is glued to the floor just for that instant that it happens. So everyone, if you're wearing shoes, you can grip the floor within your shoe. But just try it. Get into a right sound chin position. And I'll just sort of lift the arches. And you, you, see, you watch my feet, you'll see the toes gripping the floor. And when you're in this position, it's like you're glued. No, if you're wearing shoes, you sort of miss out on that. But remember, Sanchen was training you to be a fighter and wearing the karate gi or shorts or whatever you're wearing. And when you're fighting, you're gripping the floor. All right, the slow mo slower movements, bring this arm back and always bring it back in an accelerated manner. And then out, accelerated manner. You don't pose though. No. You don't hold that position out here. You hit and draw right back again. The only time that you tense your body is when you're hitting, all right, that moment. That's only like a quarter second time on target. And then the arm comes back and you're back into sort of a neutral zone. What does that mean? That means that your body, if you've been training it with lifting weights, push-ups, sit-ups. You're training your body to be strong in a natural manner. All that means is that, and again, getting back to Tommy Osi, he said, as you train with your kata, he said, you should also be training your body to be strong. So that he says, I will check you every day, every time you do San Chen, I will check to see how the natural strength in your body is developing. But as a, a person that was only studying a couple of weeks, when he did that, the first thing I did is tighten up all the muscles in my body, because I thought that was what he was looking for. And he kept saying, no, no, George, just, just do natural sound chin. And I never really understood that for maybe 20 years. It took me to figure out that sound chin was not Dynamic tension. Dynamic tension is a way of exercising. But you, when you're throwing a punch, you don't want to be exercising all your muscles, which are fighting one another, to get that arm out to the target. No, at some point you'll be fast, but it won't be your ultimate fast. The ultimate fast is where the muscles don't fight one another. And your arm will go out, the full speed, accelerate it until it hits the target. And that will be hitting the target with a, a grip on the floor, the power coming up through your body, into the arm, and into your target, whatever it might be. All right? Now, we're going to do a group on chin, and I brought Justin, and where's Mr. Durkin? We're going to do four steps forward, four steps on the turn, three steps back, and then the wauki. And the wauki, you saw me doing three different levels of it. The reason for that is 
When you're learning how to intercept an incoming punch, your arms will move like you're catching a ball. When the ball comes at you, you don't have time to have your, your mind say, oh, hey, George, a ball's coming up with your head. You've got to get your arm up there. By that time, you're on the ground. You've been hit by the ball. But the ball comes at you. Your body moves without intervention of the mind. And that's what your wauki is training you to do. But if you're doing a, only a single type of block, the tendency is that no matter where the ball's coming at you, you're going to do that full block. And if by the time your arm gets here, the ball would have hit you. And that's the reason when you start to spar, all of a sudden you have to relearn what intercepting means. And all of a sudden you're not using your waging. So about 30 years ago, I came up with the idea, well, why don't we just modify the wagey block a little bit so that we have three types of muscle memory. We've got movements up here, we have movements here, or even movements down here. And so first level is you're moving with your body, arms up here, and you're intercepting any kind of a movement in here. Then you continue your control action. The second level is coming and we time the interception move with the movement of our feet. We've done half of it. So at this point, my feet are in position, my arms are here, and then I throw the attack. So it depends on that attack is a little different than the first one. And the third one, the attack's coming at you as I'm moving, and the arm comes up, grabs, and hits as your feet land. So it gives you three ways of utilizing the wauhi. All right, I haven't taken anything away from you. All I've done is shown you a way where that you can utilize your wauhi even in sparring. Okay, so now we're going to do a sound chin. Do it the way you normally do it, but try to slow it down. Try to keep up with my pace and with Justin and with Mr. Sensei Mugurkin. Okay, ready? Sound chin. Ready? And we'll face this direction, stepping off with the right foot. Anjime. Follow that pace. And now turn one movement and continue. And turn. And three movements, double. And now any way you want to do the maoki. Hey. 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 And close game. Hey. All right, excellent. <coughs> Turning. When you turn, a lot of students will initiate the turn by focusing on their leg, their foot. So they turn and their body stays in this position. And this is the, the zone you want to clear. So what I recommend and what Sanchin teaches you is eventually get your mind out of it. So all you want to do is allow your body to turn, your foot will follow. All right, so now the moment I start to turn, my body shifts and the turn happens natural, naturally. Stepping and again, turning. You're there. I've cleared this space. Right foot forward. Ready? Turn. Step. Turn. Excellent. Okay. These are little things, yet that's why you do San Chin. You do it every day if you can. And that's the correct way 
I believe. It works, worked for me, it worked for my students. And what I've done, uh, I think it was like three years ago, I created a course on movement, how you can move, why sanction is so important. And uh, if anyone's interested in that, it, go on athomekarate.com and look up the Old Way course that talks in greater detail. I didn't want to go in too much with the time I have. And, uh, Please don't forget to like and subscribe to Live Dandy. Thank you.